Uh, hi Anna, my name is Graham Hutchinson. I just want to thank you for you setting up this platform so people like me can speak about our feelings about uh, what's going on with uh, COVID-19. Um, a little bit about uh, myself, I don't really like talking about myself, but um, who does? Um, I was the, one of the senior chief biomedical scientists at the Central Public Health Laboratory at Collingdale. I worked in the Division of Hospital and Respiratory Infection and Antimicrobial Reference Unit. Uh, we were responsible for the day-to-day -day monitoring of outbreaks of infection throughout the country. Um, I was responsible for the uh, running of the MRSA reference unit, the gram-negative unit, the molecular PCR typing unit, the identification unit, hospital hygiene unit and uh, other various laboratories uh, within our division. Um, I was also personally responsible for the Global Reference Service for the Category uh, 3 organisms uh, Francisella tularensis and Burkholderia pseudomallei. Um, just, I know people like to verify who people are. Um, whilst there, I, I worked with Professors Hodson and Geddes at the Royal Brompton Hospital uh, doing research on uh, home use nebulizers of cystic fibrosis patients and uh, Burkholderia sepatio, um, a lethal pathogen for them, uh, they're, they're being a primary source thereof, um, and you can Google that. Um, I also worked with um, uh, Professor Nolan of New Zealand on the effect of uh, Manuka honey being bactericidal against uh, MRSA strains, uh, vancomycin resistant enterococci, and other organisms. Um, and various other works I did there. Um, before that, I was the uh, chief biomedical scientist at the Royal Brompton Hospital, uh, responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the microbi microbiology department, uh, bacteriology, um, tuberculosis laboratory, uh, parasitology, media, that kind of stuff. Um, and again, if someone wanted to uh, to verify, they can. I did a paper uh, with Chadwick and Gaya on uh, Timocillin uh, activity against Haemophilus influenzae. This is only going to be a short video. There's, I, I don't think there's any, uh, any use these days of videos going on beyond five or ten minutes at most. So I'm, I'm going to keep this very short and just concentrate on three areas which I think are currently being missed. Um, the first one and uh, most important, I would say, is uh, virus attenuation. Uh, when, when vaccines are produced, they are passed through um, cell lines and they go from cell line to cell line to cell line, passaging. And as the virus passages, it gradually gets weaker and weaker and weaker until it is to such a stage that it can be used uh, as a live vaccine. Uh, back in um, April, uh, Owen Gard et al. had already noted that there was what they termed as a viral drift amongst the genomes where the COVID-19 was changing. And um, Yayo uh, et al. Um, uh, were showing that there were changes in the um, spike of the virus and regards to pathogenicity. Um, he also said that um, uh, because most of the strains that have been submitted for uh, genome analysis were from um, highly uh, dangerous cases and people that were heavily infected, um, that there was probably even more viral drift because they weren't looking at genomes from um, mild cases. So that's the first thing that I think really needs to look at. We, we're seeing a lot more cases and a lot less deaths all over the world and in my view uh, COVID-19 is not the same organism as it was uh, when it was first isolated and has now very low pathogenicity. Um, I would recommend everybody to go and look at a website called uh, nextstrain.org nextstrain.org and uh, just look at the numbers of genomes and, and what's going on. It's, um, there, there are thousands and thousands now of different strains of COVID-19. So when someone says COVID-19 uh, as a virus, it's, it's not. It is now a huge family of viruses derived from the first Wuhan strain. And when you think about it, bats carry the organism normally. Uh, they're not killed by the virus. What what point is there to a species if it kills its host? So I believe we're now seeing a less virulent but more contagious virus that is spreading everywhere. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is um, influenza vaccine. Um, 
Cowling et al. did a study uh, where they showed that those who were given influenza vaccination were significantly, significantly more likely to develop other non-influenza respiratory infections after getting the influenza vaccination. Um, currently, we're seeing in uh, South Korea, there have been 83 deaths following um, influenza vaccination, uh, mostly in elderly people, and Singapore have actually stopped stopped giving influenza vaccination. There were so few cases in the Southern Hemisphere this year that the World Health Organization organization literally had to guess what strains to put in the vaccine for the Northern Hemisphere. So I think there should be um, a watch or a warning, um, an alert going on where if anyone does fall sick following a flu vaccination, this should be flagged very urgently. Um, the last thing I want to talk about and uh, in a way connected is um, masks. Um, there's a Danish study which we're all waiting to be published, which I'm sure is going to show that uh, masks are useless. Um, there was a study by um, McIntyre uh, where he, he did a randomised control, uh, control trial on 1,600 healthcare workers and found that those with cloth masks were more likely uh, to be infected with the influenza virus than those with no masks. So let me just say that again, that those with cloth masks were more likely to get influenza infection than those with no masks. And the influenza virus is actually larger than uh, COVID-19. Um, there was also a South Korean study uh, which was very, very quickly retracted, um, which where they did take, they took four um, heavily infected patients with COVID-19 and got them to cough with various masks and no masks. And they found that COVID-19 went through the masks. And not only that, the virus actually aggregated on the outside of the mask. So all this touching of masks when people are out shopping and touching things is actually more dangerous uh, than no masks. And the aggregation on the outside has been shown by other studies too. So that brings me to a connection between the influenza and um, masks, because if we are seeing influenza disappearing throughout the world, yet we know that masks are not effective in stopping influenza, then where have the cases gone? Uh, my view is that there is some severe misdiagnosis going on and once again this PCR test um, needs to be looked at. So those are my three areas. I'll just go through them again. It's virus attenuation. I think we're now looking at a low pathogenic um, strain compared to the original strain. Uh, masks are not working and uh, flu vaccination is something that we should be aware of. So um, I hope uh, people can... Um, do some research on these and uh, uh, try and make these uh, more in the public domain. So again, once, thanks once again for um, uh, giving this opportunity and uh, I totally endorse everything that uh, Dr. Mike Yadin has been saying. Uh, it's crazy times and um, sadly we've lost, we've lost the science somewhere. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.